How would you compare the integrity of the deities of the Indians of this continent with the deities which have guided white Anglo-Saxon Protestant culture to its current point in time? How would you compare the integrities of those pantheons? Oh, like many other people, I think I would regard the invention of monotheism, an otherworldly god, as a great setback for human life, maybe worse than the invention of agriculture. Once we took the gods out of nature, out of the hills and the forests around us, and made all those little gods into one great god way up in the sky somewhere in outer space, about then human beings, particularly us Europeans, begin to devalue the earth we live on and focus our attention on transcendental values, a transcendental deity, which led to a corresponding contempt for nature and the world which feeds us and supports our lives. From that point of view, I think the Indians and most uh, traditional cultures had a much wiser worldview in that they invested every aspect of the world around them, all of nature, animal life, plant life, the landscape itself, with gods, with deity, in other words, everything was divine in some way or other. Probably a much wiser way of life. Much more capable of surviving over long periods of time. The American Indian culture apparently lasted at least 20,000 years here in North America before the Europeans largely destroyed it. And although it supported only a relatively small population, maybe 5 million, maybe 10 million, nobody really knows, it lasted for a long time. Well, European, American, Japanese industrial culture is now about 200 years old, maybe 300, and is supporting huge populations, billions. It seems doubtful that it can survive for very long, maybe another century or two, unless there's a drastic change in our way of life. More or less, as I said before, we solve all our problems by submitting to some sort of technological rationalization of everything, which probably includes the expansion of the industrial system onto the moon and the rest of the galaxy and God knows where. No wonder all the bodies in the heavenly universe seem to be flying away from planet Earth, according to some astronomers. They're trying to flee this plague of domination and greed, which is also, to some extent, the glory of our race. I admire the adventure of it all. I'm in favor of space exploration, for example. I admire science and scientists insofar as the purpose of it is to advance knowledge, to learn about the world we live in. If somehow we could keep our knowledge separated from our itch to dominate and tyrannize and enslave, I think science would be almost entirely a good thing. But instead, science has been largely misapplied for war and industrialism, and thus has probably done far more harm than good so far. But I respect and admire the intellectual adventure of science, and I think that is one of the great achievements of European, American, humankind. Where were we? <laughs> <laughs> what were we talking about? We just finished off the local deity. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, you can call me some kind of a pantheist. If there is such a thing as divinity and holiness at all, it must be in everything and not simply localized in one supernatural figure beyond time and space. Either everything is divine or nothing is. All partake of this universal divinity. The scorpion and the pack rat and the Pissmeyer, and even human beings, all or nothing, now or never, here and now. From a political point of view... I'm a registered anarchist. <laughs> How long have you been a registered anarchist? <laughs> 5,000 years. In practical politics, day-to-day -day politics, I consider myself a liberal democrat. But in the realm of ideal politics, I'm some kind of an agrarian, barefoot, wilderness, eco-freak anarchist. One of my favorite thinkers is Prince Kropotkin. 
Your mother is Henry Thoreau. Ten years ago, you gave me a copy of George Woodcock's Anarchism. Well, you actually wrote one of your theses on anarchism. My only thesis. Yeah. When did you write that? Oh, back in the 50s, mid-50s at the University of New Mexico. After I flunked out of Edinburgh, in Scotland, and got kicked out of Yale after two weeks, crawled back to New Mexico and very humbly wrote a little master's thesis for the philosophy department there, which uh, started out as an ambitious project. It was going to be a general theory of anarchism. The thesis committee and the professors soon condensed it to a tiny little historical study of a few 19th century anarchist writers like Proudhon, Kropotkin, Bakunin. So it ended up being, like most master's theses, being nothing but a little monograph on a very limited subject, namely the ethics and morality of violence as a political method. Everything phrased in quite a circumspect manner, bristling with footnotes, half of it consisting of bibliography, notes. Thus I became a master of arts, a degree which means absolutely nothing. <laughs>